Today in the news, Intel takes one step back and one step semi forward, AMD keeps pushing the Navi train and Samsung doesn't like symmetry. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Intel. So you guys might have heard about the uh, dumb move they pulled last week by pulling the embargo for their HEDT platform on the same day as AMD. Yeah, that was dumb, but that's not what I want to talk about today. I mean, they got their backlash already. What I want to talk about is their mainstream desktop platform. Right now, their latest release is the 9900KS. Great 8-core CPU, runs super hot, too expensive, etc, etc. After that, we have the upcoming Comet Lake S-based CPU use, which should go up to 10 cores. Apparently, those should arrive in the first half of 2020. But what's next? You can only stay on 14 nanometer for so long, and apparently the company won't have their sub 14 nanometer process ready for mainstream until at least 2022, whether that's in 10 or 7 nanometers. I mean, they could possibly increase the core count, but according to recent rumors, that's actually not what they plan to do. The information comes from uh, Momomo US on Twitter, and while he has success leaked a bunch of stuff from AMD and Intel, take this with a grain of salt. So apparently Rocket Lake S, which should be Intel's 2021 release, will go back to 8 core maximum for their top end mainstream processors. Now this might seem like a step backwards, and well it kind of is, but the actual CPU design should be different. If we look at the leak, we can see that the 8 cores max of Rocket Lake S would feature faster native memory support and also Gen 12 graphics, which so far has been exclusive to Intel's new Cove branded cores. According to another source on Twitter, Rocket Lake should also feature AVX512 instructions. Essentially, Intel would take the upcoming Tiger Lake core design, which should be Willow Cove at 10 nanometer plus, and use it on its 14 nanometer process. As you can see from the 125 watt max TDP, it looks like this design will still run very hot for an 8 core processor. Maybe this design will cost them less to produce, which could in turn lower the prices of the CPUs. I mean, they don't really have a choice. By then, AMD will have gone through Zen 3 and possibly Zen 4. So if you can't fight the performance, fight the price. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Moving on to some AMD news, we finally get a small update on the RX series of GPUs. First, the RX 5500. According to various sources on the interwebs, the RX 5500 series should come out next week on December 12th. No news on a possible RX 5500 XT just yet, but I don't see why AMD wouldn't make that one available given no cards are currently taking full advantage of the Navi 14 chips. Now we also have some new information on the RX 5600 series. According to sources at Video Card Com, at least two board vendors are currently working on a 5600 XT. What is a little odd is the memory configuration at 6 gigabytes of GDDR6. What I think it is is just like the 5500 series, where we have a 4 and an 8 gigabyte variant, the 5600 series will have a 6 and an 8 gigabyte. And for the release date, we don't have any information, but it should arrive next year, possibly in January. Looping back to some Intel news, it looks like they finally decided that some manufacturing help was needed after realizing that their CPU shortage is a problem. According to a report from Pulse News Korea, Samsung has recently secured a PC CPU order from Intel. We had previously heard that Intel would hire other fabs for chipset manufacturing to alleviate their 14 nanometer process fab, but this turned out to be false. To alleviate the shortage, Intel rolled back some chipsets to 28 nanometers, but of course, that wouldn't fix the problem entirely. Now, with the official order, Intel might be able to keep the shortage away for a little longer. This deal is for PC CPUs, which is a pretty broad term, but it definitely means that some CPUs, whether it's on tablets, laptops, or desktops, will be made by a different manufacturer. Hopefully, there are some desktop chips in that order. That way, we could uh, try and source one from each to see if there is an actual difference. Speaking of Samsung, it looks like the Galaxy S11 Plus is already leaking out, and it doesn't look that great actually. So the renders for any leaked phones like this are of course not made by Samsung, but they are based on CAD drawings from the company. Also, like any leaks, the salt is always real. So 
Why doesn't it look that good? Well, look at that camera module. Not only is it the biggest thing I've seen for a smartphone, but absolutely nothing on it is aligned. This is a symmetry nightmare. There's probably a reason for that, but just like the stovetop iPhone 11 camera module, I'm sure there will be some fun memes incoming. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. If you got any questions or comments, you know where to put them. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. So last week on one of my videos, I made two Davy 504 references. Thanks for everyone who has picked that up. I just, I've only been watching him for a, a few months now, but definitely a fun dude.